Alrighty, part two, the 148 scale Apollo lunar spacecraft. In the previous video, I showed you what the whole stack looked like with the Shapeways BPC and Launch Escape Tower. So now I want to show you basically everything else underneath that. One of the goals for me was to get the command module to look shinier than the service module. So I managed to find a paint that did that. And I'll give you my advice on, on shooting that part and I'll show you what paint I used. Did a lot of research, uh, space modeling group on Facebook, a few other locations, and uh, this is the first time I ever saw this product used. I just saw it on Amazon um, and read the reviews. It's called Spaztic Ultimate Mirror Chrome. It's an alcohol-based paint, and it sprays super clean, not dirty, cleans up fantastic in your, in your air gun, and I'd highly recommend it. You want to spray this over a gloss black primer, okay? What you don't want to do is shoot a second coat because then it'll end up looking like the service module. You got one shot to get it right, so get it right the first time. Um, one of the things that I really didn't think about until after the fact is once the part was dry and I started to fit that part to the heat shield and I was working on a few other things where I was manipulating that outer shell, the oils in your hands and your fingers basically impart into the chrome finish and it tends to dull it so that part could be a lot shinier than what it is right now so my advice would be to wear latex or vinyl gloves anytime you hold that part in your hand fit it to the heat shield whatever you're going to do definitely you'll want to have uh, vinyl or latex on otherwise you're going to just start to dull that part like like mine um mine turned out it's not horrible but it was a lot shinier so if that's a piece of advice i definitely want you to to consider all right so I'm going to pop this nose cap off of here unscrew this cover to reveal the para parachute assembly right there turned out you know for a block one design there's not a lot of reference material to go with so I went with what I had and used a little bit of creative license All in all, pretty decent for it, for the display piece that it is. So, I mentioned previously that this kit comes with an opening side panel. And the seams, which you see here, really never close that well. They close, sometimes they close kind of well, but other times they just kind of gape open a little bit. That's just because of the design of the, of the hinge mechanism. Um... You can spend a lot of time, you know, working on, on that to make it better. But, you know, I came up with a little different solution. And I'll show you uh, what this looks like here. Pop this open. What I do on mine, for display purposes, I get a rubber band. Not real tight fitting. I wrap it around this RCS quad like this. And then I stretch it over to the... RCS quad on the, on the back side and that holds it open really well without putting any real undue stress on the quad and that way you can see the inside nicely it creates a really nice display and so that's how the kit came the way you see it there Let me zoom in a bit here okay you've got the big white fuel sump tank you've got the fuel cells on the top oxygen tank and then hydrogen tank there You've got the white hypergolic propellant tanks for the RCS quads. Now, on the other side is a, is a small panel that you had to glue to a much larger panel on the back side. It was a... It's not difficult to glue, but the seam is real evident. And in order to make that seam go away, you're going to end up destroying all the detail that you see on this section right here. I opted to not do that after messing up the first time. Fortunately, I had a second kit just for parts, so I decided to do something a little different, and so I made this a second opening panel. Put that rubber band on there, strap it across the back. So now we have two panels that open to reveal a sump tank on the right side, the again the hypergolic fuel tanks for the quad on the right, and uh, 
makes for a nice display, I think. Um, the color schemes, the zinc, uh, green zinc chromate, um, probably not authentic, but it looks cool. Certainly it's authentic in the world of aircraft building, and so I ended up using it here. Um, pop this CM off of here so you can see the top of that, see what that looks like. I did a video on how I masked off those domes on there. It was uh, quite a bit to, to mask those off so that they looked good. And that turned out pretty well. Pretty pleased with that result. Um, command module. I made some modifications to it that I don't think anybody else has done. I'm gonna hold this in my hand. I wonder how that's gonna work out. We'll see. I put a light kit in here. And the switch for it is on the top of the transfer tunnel, right there. So I use the back of a pencil to turn it on. And let's just see if we can see this as I hand hold it. All right. Man, yeah, not too bad. You know, you do all that detail work on the astronauts and on the control panel in there, and then you can't see anything once you put it all together. So, turned out good. One of the secrets is to position the lights. I'll show you what the kit looks like. To position the lights in a way that you don't see them when you're looking inside, so you're kind of hiding them. So I position one set of lights down on the floor or the under the crew couch, sort of, back, back under the couch and closer towards the front end of the transfer tunnel, and then the other two lights up on either side of the uh, side windows next to the hatch. Um, focus it was a lot of manipulation it's actually it was actually a four strand harness and I broke one of the strands because I was just over handling it is what it was I want you to see the air the control panels okay the these decals on here aren't really decals in, in the strictest sense I the decals from this kit were old and they were just basically shot so I went online and I found the decals online and I uh, took a uh, basically Took that image of the decals into Photoshop and I photoshopped them. I printed them off on my on my inkjet printer, believe it or not. Um, but before that I took them into Photoshop and I made some modifications. I added some more gauges and kind of filled up the filled everything up so it looked like it was just packed full of all sorts of cool gauges and stuff. So you can kind of see them way back in there. There's a lot more in there on the floor, you can't really see that well. But yeah. So, um, I'm going to go put this back on. Always getting this to fit on the first time is a real pain. Lining everything up. Okay. So, there you go. Get that focus right. Alrighty, turn this light off. That'll overexpose the crew. I'll shut that light off here. Close the hatch on the CM. So guys, that's uh that was the modifications I made to this uh to this kit. I think all in all it turned out pretty good for a display piece. I had some fun with the mods. Uh some of it was frustrating because you know how can it not be? You know, you're building a, a model kit and you're doing stuff to it that wasn't, you know, designed to, to be built that way. So you're you're having to put parts and things inside the command module that, you know, really weren't designed to be in there. For example, that light kit. Oh yeah, I want to show you that. That light kit is all all the all the guts of that light kit is stored up underneath that parachute pack assembly. Um, including the battery. The kit is called let's see, let me read this here. Evan Designs lighting kit. It came with four lights. Like I said, I um, damaged one in the manipulation of the, and they're really fine, fine harnesses too, super fine. So that's what the switch looks like. Four strand harness and has a coin op, a coin battery comes with it. www.lightsforminis, M-I-N-I-S.com. And they offer a variety of light, of light sizes. Uh, this one here is called the Pico. That was the smallest one. Pico. But it did a good job illuminating. 
Um, again, the switch is in the transfer tunnel. All the higher harnessing is up inside here, including the battery. I created a a out of out of uh, out of a um, parts runner. I created a a hanger up in there so that it holds everything in the place. And then I glued this back on top of the uh, CM, which means I'm not going to be able to replace that battery. That battery will will be good until it's not, and then someone else can figure out how to replace it. I won't be around to worry about that. So. For demonstration purposes, uh, that LED light and that battery will last a long time. So that's it. The lights, oh, by the way, the lights, just so you know, I positioned those lights strategically right here and then right there. And then the third light is under the crew couch down towards the transfer tunnel so it lit up the whole floor. So that's kind of where I put it, but you might find a better place to put it. The goal is to not see them when you look through any of the windows, and that was accomplished. So anyhow, guys, um, that's it. I'm on to the lunar module. I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything lighted on that or not. You know, um, this project, I'm not in any big rush with it, and I'd kind of like to finish it because i got other kits I want to build, but I, wanna, I don't want to rush through it, and, you know, I kind of like to do something unique with it as well. So anyhow, thanks for watching, guys.